market update here on the 10th. So, I haven't made a video for a couple of days. I was bullish going into yesterday uh, because we were sitting in daily demand. And what are we doing now? We are sitting in daily demand again. So, again, I am bullish going into tomorrow. Um, as far as this structure goes right here, I think this is either a five wave move or it is an ABC move. Take your pick. It's a lot of chop and um, it's a lot, it's pretty annoying to even chart it. But I can see either way where it is five wave move right here where we have wave one, wave two, wave, th wave three right here, wave four. And I messed that up. One second. One, two, three, four, and five. This last fifth wave would be a ending diagonal. And at this point, um, as far as going higher to new highs, I think that's pretty much out the window. Right now, I'm only looking for a bounce, um, a lower high here, because if we zoom in here, we did get this move, and it looked like I had a chance to be a five-way move. I was like, all right, cool. We have a chance to get a five-way move. And what do we do? Straight down to new lows. Broke the lows. So essentially, a new move to new highs is pretty much out the window. That's not going to happen. Um, and this right here is most likely, in my opinion, a B wave. If you break it down on lower time frames, I think that... We have basically five waves right here. And then this came down a little bit. It was a five wave move a little bit down here. Um, a little bit past the 1.23 Fib. And then we're back into demand zone again. And so what do you do? You buy calls. And what happens? It bounces outside the demand zone. Not a big bounce so far. Um, it's a very good possibility that this is wave one. This is wave two, and we're going to see wave three like this tomorrow. And if this is a wave B, so if this is A, this is wave B, I would be looking for something probably up here around 374 again, and there is a supply zone right there. So that's kind of what I'm looking for tomorrow. Um, is there any bear counts? I'm not very bearish tomorrow. It could happen. But I don't see a very good bear count unless, let's see, I don't see a very good bear count because I don't consider this five waves. If it was five waves, I would have wanted to see, this right here. Instead, we came way back up here. Um, that would have been an extended fifth wave, so we would have had three, four, and we would have had one, two, three, four, and five. So I guess technically that could be a fourth wave, but probably not. So again, we're in daily demand. We filled the gap yesterday, and we keep on hitting this spot. So if you have this spot marked, we've bounced in it now four times. One, two, three, and four. So it's a pretty strong demand area if I zoom out here on the daily chart. Right there, daily demand, we're in it. If we break below 364.61, that's going to be really bearish. But then again, we'd probably just come down here to this demand zone here at 362 to 364. So really, below this, there's a lot of support. Um, is this a gap right here? I don't know if it's a gap or not. right here on the 29th so it's already been filled so this has already been filled don't have to worry about that uh, obviously it's been filled I see it now um, but it is a demand zone right there so this is the main one though the demand zone to hold is 364.65 now where can this go on the upside again about 374 that would make this an ABC pattern. And then from there, um, I was going to say yesterday, but I didn't make the video. 
that we're probably going to get a shallow B wave. And I would actually say that might be the top right there. But it is always possible that we get a pullback and then get a C wave higher and fill this gap at 382. But I would say that's pretty unlikely. So I would look for something up here into this supply zone again. And then we're probably going to head down after that. So you got to be ready. Um, the overall move is going to look potentially like this. And I'd be looking for about 354 to 356. Let's see if there's any demand zones down there. On the daily chart. Don't see anything right now. Uh, maybe... There's something on smaller time frames, but that's basically what I see. Um, we'll see if this is the end of the B wave or we get a pullback and go higher tomorrow. But overall, I'm bullish. Tesla, uh, this funky formation that has played out over the last couple of weeks now, started in July, is likely a C wave now. I thought it was going to be a B wave because it looked pretty choppy. But it's just chopping down pretty much. I think tomorrow, though, we can see this come back up here to 250 if we get that bounce on QQQ, in which this would end up being. Um, let's, let's zoom in here a little bit. I think that actually this is probably going to end up being. If it comes back, it might come back up here to like 248, 249. But I, th I still think that this is going to happen right here, most likely, and fill the gap. So I think this is about finished. It needs a little bit more downside, fill the gap. We zoom out here on the higher time frames. I mean, you look at standard deviations, we are way outside. It's only 150. Let's try 300. So on 300, we're not necessarily that far down, but um, we are below the mean. So I expect a little bit more downside and then a bounce. That bounce could be the next move higher for the fifth wave, or it could be a B wave where we just bounce and we get an extended C wave down. And this ends up being a longer drawn out process. As long as it doesn't come into 218, then it's still considered a fourth wave and we can go to new highs. So Tesla has been very, very funky since they had earnings on the 19th. It's just been straight down basically. Let's go over Apple. So Apple, same thing, really no movement today, pinned. And this can be a lot of things. Let me zoom in a little bit more. I know the third wave ended right here. So this can be the fourth wave. This could be the first and the second wave. And we could be heading down for a third wave. Or if they want to really mess with people, we can head back higher as well. This could end up being something where it goes back up here to 183 potentially. Or if this was it right here, let me zoom in a little bit farther. The thing is, this is not a wave one right here. This is not wave one. So for that reason, this is probably going to go higher. I expect Apple to, and this could be the end of the B wave right here. So I think this is probably going to do something like this. Back up here to like 180, 182 maybe. And then we sell off maybe next week into the gap fill into this demand zone. So Apple not looking good. Tesla not looking good. But they probably are going to bounce tomorrow. And then Microsoft. They're all kind of in the same spot. So today they kept them down. This looks like a B wave to me. So I would expect, again, something probably like this. One. 
one, two, three, four, and five. And then more downside, let me zoom out on this. At this point, I think it's probably inevitable that all these stocks are gonna hit their um, gap fills. Microsoft has one at 316, Tesla has one at 235, Apple has one at 176. So yeah, I would look for a little bit upside tomorrow and they're just gonna burn puts in my opinion. That's kind of what my thoughts are. Um, but again, if it does sell off, then you're looking at these gap fills, lots of demand down here on Tesla 235 and Apple 176. Let's go over Amazon now. Amazon basically pinned all day. Really boring day. But again, this is setting up. Or is it? Yesterday it was setting up for a move higher. And now it looks. Yesterday I think we were right here. And so I was thinking we could probably come up here to 144. But we get ABC and we pull back right here. Uh, this could be. This can still be a second wave though. This could be a first wave, second wave, third, fourth, fifth, up to 144. But it also can be A, B, C, A, B. And if that's the case, I would be looking for something down here to like 133, 134. So 133, 134, or a third wave higher, all the way up here to 144. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. They're all at a point where they can go either way, pretty much. And so that's why I'm using a lot of language. The other video I did, someone was saying, you say possibly, you say maybe a lot. Well, of course, because I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm just doing probabilities. And so if I knew exactly what was going to happen, I would be making all kinds of money. I just use probabilities. And when the probability gets cut in half or... It doesn't work out then I change my thoughts on it so Amazon Nvidia well Nvidia is definitely if it's gonna go higher it's got to be an ending diagonal now for sure so there is a potential that this actually already topped out now and we're starting consolidation. Let's zoom out here. Standard deviation, we're at the very low part of that. Um, so yeah, it's either gonna be an ending diagonal or we started consolidation and this is not a third wave. So basically invalidated a fourth wave pretty much. There is a gap fill down here at 395. It's kind of far away. I don't expect it to get there before earnings. Um, overall, this move looks like definitely an ABC move. I would expect a bounce tomorrow. So you can see a, B, C. One, two, three, four, five. So if it's gonna go lower, then it's probably gonna bounce at least, or we're gonna get an ending diagonal higher. Target would be 500, or we get a bounce right here, and then we make a five wave move down here, potentially to 395. So let's look at the dollar. The basic path of the dollar, in my opinion, it's probably going to get stronger in the short term. I'm looking for like 106, 107 by October. And then I'm looking for a move straight down to 93. So I think the dollar is going to get a lot weaker going all the way into like February or March. And that's going to allow the market to melt up to new highs. So the overall pattern is going to be like this. And if we zoom out here on the dollar, 
Let's go to the weekly. I consider this either a diagonal, but more than likely an A wave. We're making the B wave right now, or it's probably better to label it WXY. Um, but if we come down here to 93, then I'm looking for a move up to potentially 150, just based on where this came from, 70 up to 114, down to 93. Let's take a parallel lines here and just take a look at where it could go. Maybe 136, but I expect a pretty big move higher after that. So I'll look at the standard deviations real quick. Let's see where they're at on the weekly chart. So over the last 300 weeks, we are getting towards the bottom of this, but I expect it to hit the bottom of this and then it can make its way up here to the top and that might take a while. We might get a blow off top in the market and then sell off pretty hard. So that's pretty much it. One other thing on the daily chart, look at this. We're in demand and we're also at the bottom of the standard deviations. So I'm bullish just from looking at this, but again, I do expect more downside over the next couple of months, so be ready for that. And we're probably going to get some early next week if we're bullish tomorrow. My base case is tomorrow, even if PPI is above expectations, I still think that we might get some kind of funky move to kill all those puts that are bought today. And then next week we sink lower, just based on what I see in the charts. So ending diagonal is likely finished, not a possibility. I really need to change this actually, but the third wave is done right here. So this is most likely an A wave. We're looking for a B wave bounce to 374. We need to get a green candle on the daily. So I think that happens tomorrow and then more downside next week. So that is it. I'll put the timestamps in the description and some key takeaways. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe, if you like the content. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments and any tickers you want done. I might start doing some more growth stocks on individual videos. And I even was thinking about doing individual videos for every stock um, because these are not getting very many views compared to like SoFi video or any of the growth stock names. So, let me know if you like that better and give me some tickers to look at and I'll catch you in the next video.